So now there's a lot of times in electronics where you want to make sure there's always a voltage at an input, even if it's weak. So we have a pull up resistor right here. We'll look at the pull down resistor uh, coming up. But in any case, that makes sure that there's five volts at an input and we have the switch next to it. When you press the button, in this case, closing the switch, now we have a direct connection to zero volts ground as far as the output is concerned. Whatever comes through there just goes right to ground. An input would not see that. There is the other case. You can have a pull down resistor right there. Make sure it stays uh, zero volts until you press the button, which we can see over here. So I'll press the button, direct connection to five volts. So remember, you can't pass current um, through the pull down resistor. I mean, it's not very effective, uh, but you can with the switch if need be. But usually it's going to an input that just cares whether it sees zero volts or five volts. So technically speaking, a pull down resistor would not do a lot for an NPN bipolar junction transistor. But one thing it does, if you accidentally uh, touch this or you got something that has strong magnetic fields or something uh, nearby, it may start making the transistor turn on a little bit, which uh, you may not desire. Uh, normally, you got to, in this case, close the switch, get a little base to emitter current to get the transistor to conduct uh, fully. Um, but again, if you touch it, it might uh, kind of conduct a little bit. Maybe that will cause problems. So what a pull down resistor will do will make sure that uh, even if you got like stray signals and stuff, they probably will not be able to get any uh, current flow because you got that connection to ground. It will overpower it. So that's one way you can use a pull down resistor, making sure you got uh, zero volts at the base, even if you got stray signals. So now, remember, whatever applies to NPN bipolar junction transistors, which are the more common ones, especially to study about, also applies to PNP, but polarities are opposite. So previous uh, short, we looked at the pull down resistor, kept the NPN bipolar junction transistor off, even with stray signals, like you accidentally touched this or something, or there's strong magnetic fields nearby or something. Um, now we got a PNP uh, bipolar junction transistor with a pull up. Uh, resistor right there helping to make sure it stays off until we close the switch and then we have that current path uh, right there which will turn it on so a lot of times that's not a problem if it kind of turns on a little bit in this case the LED was kind of like glow a little bit um, but you may have circuitry that needs to be off uh, solidly and uh, therefore you just grab the pull down resistor that is strong enough to keep it off fully probably 10k will work just fine so now I thought I had a diagram for the N-channel enhancement mode MOSFET like this, but uh, I just have the P-channel. I have to make more diagrams coming up. But in any case, uh, we have this uh, P-channel enhancement mode MOSFET. It's waiting for a low input right there to make the P-channel more positive. We're keeping this simplified and to conduct. Um, but it can be influenced by stray signals and other uh, problems. So if uh, you want to make sure it turns off uh, completely, you should really use a pull-up resistor right there. You could swap these positions to make it stay on all the time until you close the switch as well. So um, that's a very uh, good use for the pull-up resistor. Also, uh, static charges can build up on the gate. In fact, it can lock into on or off if it's just floating, um, which may or may not be a big deal. But in any case, uh, the pull-up or a pull-down resistor will prevent static charge from building up and uh, you may fry less components. So now we're gonna look at another pull-down resistor example. There's also pull-up resistors. But in any case, we have a NPM bipolar junction transistor right here. We have a Zener diode, so it's reverse bias. Once you get about 3.3 volts across it, it starts conducting pretty well. You need another about 0.6 volts approximately from base to emitter right there to get the base to emitter to conduct. So really you need about 3.9 volts to really get this uh, conducted. And then uh, turn the load on right there. Uh, one thing is though, without this resistor there, these uh, Zener diodes, they still leak like a little bit of current below their Zener voltage and whatnot. So does the base to emitter uh, right there. So it might start conducting a little bit when you don't want it to. We give it an alternative path there, lower resistance path, and therefore it will help take away leakage current, making sure that stays off. Of course, once you got enough voltage, there's gonna be enough current to go both directions. Transistor will turn on fully. So now for the last example of a pull down uh, resistor in this series, it comes up uh, quite a bit. We have uh, basically the same circuit as the last video, but now we have a higher uh, Zener voltage that we're gonna work with. Zener down, 5.1 uh, volt. Remember, you got the base to emitter of the transistor, so those add up. It's gonna be somewhere around like 5.7 or so. 
uh, volts that you need from the supply before the transistor will really start turning on. Um, problem is at uh, lower voltages, you still get like a little bit of trickle uh, going on. Um, so we got a resistor here that uh, we're adding extra right there to the negative supply. Whatever trickles through the zener dial will just go to ground right there. It's an easier path than this way. Of course, once the voltage gets high enough, the zener dial can pass enough current uh, to go both paths right there. So the transistor will turn on fully. 